The little boy, who seemed like the leader, looked to be only eight or nine years old. How did he become the chairman of the Dinglong Corporation? It was simply unheard of for someone to become a chairman at this age. Everyone looked at each other. No one spoke. It was not that they did not want to, but they did not dare. Although everyone was surprised by Yi Xin's age, no one dared to say anything. After all, Yi Xin was the chairman. Who dared to speak nonsense? The higher ups looked at Yi Xin respectfully and followed General Manager Lu Zonglin into the office building of the Jinling Branch Company with Yi Xin. The first floor of the building was simple and grand. The light gray color of the building made it look low key and luxurious. There were many employees coming and going, but it did not seem messy. Instead, they waited for the elevator in an orderly manner, each doing their own job. Even the security officers at the entrance of the first floor were young and strong. They looked very energetic. Yi Xian was very satisfied with this spirit and nodded gently. Lu Zonglin led the way and brought Yi Xian to the sales department for his inspection. The office area of the sales department was very large, but there were not many employees who were really working at the booths. The general manager of the sales department walked out and explained, Chairman, this time is when our salespeople go out to visit. However, they have detailed work records every day. Their workflow was all carried out according to the requirements sent by the headquarters. There was definitely no slacking or changes. The manager of the sales department even suggested bringing Yi Xian to their department center for a walk, but Yi Xian waved his hand and rejected her. I'm just here for a simple inspection. I don't want to affect everyone's normal work. Let's take a simple look and leave. No one dared to refute Yi Xian's arrangement. They nodded and followed behind Lu Zongli. Then, they inspected a few more departments. Yi Xian stood at the entrance and took a simple look, trying his best not to affect the employee's normal work. The employees did their own jobs and seriously did the work at hand. The atmosphere of work was very rich and lively. The entire Jinling branch looked like a very energetic company. Yi Xian had lived in Jinling for a few years, so he naturally knew where the Jinling branch of the Dinglong Corporation was located in the Jinling business circle. It was definitely like a big brother in the business circle. Such prestige was not only brought about by the reputation of the headquarters. It was also greatly related to the branch company's own strength. Yi Xian believed that the Jinling branch company was operating well, so he was more interested in inspecting and not participating in it. After inspecting the various departments, Lu Zonglin suggested to Yi Xian softly, Why don't we go to the meeting room and report the operations of the branch company to you? Upon hearing this, Yi Xian nodded. Sure. He also wanted to know what projects were being carried out by the Jinling branch company and the real situation of their operations. After getting Yi Xian's approval, everyone immediately escorted Yi Xian to the large meeting room. Looking at the luxurious conference table filled with blooming flowers, Yi Xian felt a chill run down his spine. Wasn't this welcome meeting too retro? It was as if he was going to give them a big lesson after his meeting. However, since he had already made the arrangements, Yi Xian was unwilling to reject everyone's good intentions, so he walked to the master seat and sat down. The higher-ups of the various departments reported in turn, briefly describing the projects that the departments were working on, as well as the progress and summary of the projects. Yi Xian listened with relish and even gave some very accurate suggestions from time to time. His actions made all the higher-ups present respect him. Even after careful consideration, they might not be able to think of such precise and accurate suggestions. However, Yi Xian was able to bring it up in time when he was listening to the report. This showed his logical thinking and business control ability. He was too powerful. This was especially so at his age. Although it was amazing for a young business genius to do this, it was also normal. However, for an eight or nine-year-old child to be able to do this, everyone had to look up to him. When the meeting ended, it was almost dinner time. Chairman Yi, why don't you stay for a meal with us? Lu Zonglin suggested. Yi Xian agreed. At the same time, he could also check the condition of the meals provided to the employees. Lu Zonglin and a group of higher-ups accompanied Yi Xian to the employees' cafeteria. The employees' cafeteria was very big and had dozens of different stalls. Employees could choose their meal according to their preferences. We have stalls for several general cuisines. We have Sichuan cuisine here, Lu cuisine over there, and Cantonese cuisine. Basically, we can satisfy most people's needs. 
Lu Zonglin was very familiar with the employee's cafeteria. He even knew the signature dishes at the stalls like the back of his hand. It could be seen that he often ate here. Yi Xian took all of this in. This meant that Lu Zonglin was an amiable general manager who did not put on airs. Moreover, he was smart and capable of doing big things. It was almost dinner time, and many employees were eating here. When they saw the higher-ups, they smiled and greeted them. After a simple meal, Yi Xian suddenly received a call from his sister. Xiao Xian, where are you? Mom and dad are coming back? Yi Xian was instantly stunned when he heard the call. Were his parents actually coming back? Sister, I understand. I'll go back now. Then, Yi Xian hung up. Lu Zhenglin heard what Yi Xian said and stood aside to wait. Yi Xian looked at him. I might have to go back now. All right, Chairman Yi. Lu Zhenglin was still nervous. After all, he did not know if Chairman Yi was satisfied with his work. Yi Xian looked at Lu Zhenglin. I'm still very assured that the Jinling branch is in your hands. With that, Yi Xian and Lu Yinran left. They drove at full speed. Back home, he opened the door. Immediately, sounds of concern came from inside. Are you guys all right at home? Where's Xiao Xian? A middle-aged man looked at Yi Chan in front of him and asked with a smile, Dad, Mom, you're back? Then, Yi Xian looked at his parents and walked over. Yi Hongliang looked at Yi Xian in front of her and immediately came over to pick him up. Did you go out to play? No, I went out for some business. These words made everyone's eyes widen. Then, they couldn't help but laugh. Even Yi Hongliang laughed out loud. His mother couldn't help but laugh too. An eight or nine year old child acted seriously and said that he went out for some business. Who would believe him? All right, all right, all right. It's good to be busy with serious matters. It's not bad that my son is like this now. In the future, the Tianxian Corporation will still rely on you said Yi Hongliang loudly. Then, he looked at Yi Xian and his daughters with a doting gaze. However, Yi Hongliang thought of something and the smile on his face froze. He looked at Yi Chan beside him and asked, Little Chan, when is your big sister coming back? Big sister should be getting off work soon, said Yi Chan. She also thought of something and her expression froze. Yi Hongliang looked at Yi Xian and smiled again as if he was coaxing Yi Xian. Xiao Xian, Go upstairs and play first. I'll discuss something with your sisters later, okay? Yi Xian nodded and went upstairs. A while later, the sisters returned one after another. There were also voices downstairs, but Yi Hongliang looked at them and gestured for them to lower their voices so that Yi Xian, who was upstairs, wouldn't hear them. However, he didn't know that after Yi Xian's body was strengthened, his hearing was extraordinary. Even if they whispered, he would still hear every word through the door. Downstairs. Second sister Ying looked at her father and said, Dad, the Mayni family is too much of a bully. What right do they have to let our big sister marry into that lay family? It's not like there aren't any women among their direct descendants. Why don't they marry over? Besides, our collateral relatives haven't obtained the protection of the main family in Tianjing. Last time, when Yi Hai came, he was so arrogant. Who was he trying to disgust? Third sister was the same. Her face turned cold. That's right, dad. They've gone too far. Dad, what should we do? Fourth sister Yi Chan also looked at her father. After all, in their family, her father had the final say. Ye Hongliang Siket. The Main Yi family is considered a reputable family in Tianjing. They have connections and influences in all walks of life. It's true that we haven't been protected by them. But if we go against them, not only will Tianxian Corporation suffer, but even your achievements in various industries might be wiped out by the Yi family. Aren't you afraid? Yi Hongliang's words made everyone in front of him fall silent. Even so, we can't let our big sister suffer like this. We can't stand it either. Second sister Ying usually looked gentle and weak, but now, she was abnormally strong. I don't believe that the main Yi family can flatten my results. At most, I'll bring everyone to open a small clinic overseas. I don't believe that they can manage the situation overseas. Exactly. That's right, Dad. Voices sounded one after another, but their big sister Yi Wan did not say anything. She looked at her father. Then, she saw Yi Hongliang smiling at her. Why? Are you afraid that I'll really compromise? 
The Tianjin Yi family is powerful, but our Tianxian Corporation is not to be trifled with either. If we really want to take action, let's try it. If we can't pass, they won't have an easy time either. These words were simply invigorating. Even their big sister's face was filled with tears. Dad. All right, go to bed first. You have to work tomorrow. Leave this to me. Yi Hongliang patted their heads and watched them go upstairs. Then, he sighed deeply. At the side, Yi Xin's mother, Sun Xiaoqin, said, The main family has indeed gone too far. What do you plan to do? Didn't the main family say that they would discuss it on the old master's birthday next month? In that case, I'll naturally fight for it. If we fall out, we can only fight with the main family, said Yi Hongliang. At that time, it will be hard on these children. We might really have to go overseas. We have to integrate our forces now. Ye Hongliang Siket. This time, the foreign investments aren't going well. We have to hurry up and get some funds back. Sun Xiaoqin was silent for a moment. Our funds are all in a few real estate funds now. It's not easy to withdraw them. We can only wait and see. That's the only way. After saying that, the two of them went to wash up. Meanwhile, Yi Xin carried a pillow to Yi Wan's room. Big sister, are you asleep? Little brother? Yi Wan looked at Yi Xin, and a smile bloomed on her face. Come, come, come. Come in quickly. What's the matter? You guys don't seem to be in a good mood, asked Yi Xin deliberately. It's fine. How can you feel that we're in a bad mood? Yi Wan smiled and said, Little guy, are you worried about us? Your sisters are all very powerful. Why are you worried about us? As she spoke, Yi Wan poked Yi Xin's glabella. The next moment, a light screen popped up, detected that the host has obtained the opportunity to sign in. Do you want to sign in immediately? He signed in. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a map of the unmined gold mines in Jinling. Oh, in an instant, even Yi Xin was stunned. Then, he walked to the other side. Big sister, I'm going to the toilet. Go, go. When he arrived at the toilet, Yi Xin took out the gold mine distribution map from the system. Then, he looked at the unmined gold mines. There were many distribution locations, but some were sporadic or under-residential buildings. Only the largest one was in the mountains. It was under a remote village called Jingyang Village. He wanted to mine for gold. In an instant, Yi Xin had an idea. There was no need to say how valuable such a large reserve of gold was, right? At that moment, Yi Xin made a few calls and asked Lu Yanran and Zheng Zhanghao to meet him tomorrow. Then, he returned to his big sister's bed and hugged his big sister Yi Wan. Hum? He didn't trigger a sign-in. He changed his posture again. He had not triggered a sign-in again. After changing ten postures in a row without triggering anything, Yi Xin turned around resentfully and went to sleep. Yi Wan was confused. What happened just now? Why did it feel like something had happened, but it also felt like nothing had happened? The next day, Yi Xin went to Villa Number One. After a while, Zhang Jianghao and Lu Yanran arrived. Young master, what can we do for you? Lu Yanran and Zhang Jianghao stood respectfully in front of Yi Xian and asked softly. Yi Xian looked at the two of them and said to Zhang Jianghao, Bring some people with me to Zhengyang village tomorrow. When Zhang Jianghao heard Yi Xian mention Zhengyang village, he was obviously stunned for a moment and subconsciously asked, Young master, why are you going to Zhengyang village? When Yi Xian saw Zhang Jianghao's reaction, he could not help but raise his eyebrows. Instead of answering, he asked, From your expression, you seem to know about Jingyang village, right? Zhang Jianghao scratched his head and did not hide anything. He said to Yi Xian, Yes, I do know Jingyang village. My grandparents are still living in Jingyang village. Seeing that Yi Xian seemed to be very interested in Jingyang village, Zhang Jianghao continued, Jingyang village is famous for being a poor village, so when I heard young master mention it, I felt that it was a little strange. How did you know that place? The reason why Jingyang village was so poor was entirely because it was in a remote mountain. Putting aside the fact that there were mountains on three sides, the road into the village was rugged and winding, and it was very difficult to walk there. The money that could be used to build an entire road elsewhere could not even be used to build a fifth of the road here. As time passed, the funding from the higher-ups decreased. Zhangyang village completely fell into the mud of poverty and could not climb out. In order to live a better life, 
the younger people generally left Zhongyang village to work outside. Most of the people who stayed behind in the village were old people and children. This way, the productivity of Zhongyang village plummeted, and the entire village declined and became poorer. However, there are many agricultural products and fruits in Zhongyang village, and their quality is very good. However, because the road is too rugged, no matter how good the agricultural products are, they can't be transported out. Young master, don't tell me you want to help them. When Zhang Jianghao voiced his last guess, his eyes lit up and shone with anticipation. He knew Yi Xin's strength very well. If he was willing to help, Zhongyang village would definitely undergo a huge transformation. If that was really the case, the elders of Zhongyang village who could not leave their hometown could live a peaceful old age. Without experiencing the era of inaccessibility, one would not know how poor a closed mountain village was. Because cars could not drive in normally, all the goods in Zhongyang village had to be carried in by human strength. However, most of the young and strong people in the village had left, leaving behind the old, weak, women, and children. They could not carry anything heavier. Therefore, until now, the only small shop in Zhongyang village was always selling the same necessities and seasonings. There was nothing else. The children of Zhongyang village had never even seen the most ordinary snacks that other children ate. When they were hungry, the elders at home would roast two potatoes to fill their stomachs. It sounded as if roasted potatoes were especially interesting and fragrant, but what if one's main food and dishes were potatoes every day? Can one still eat happily? Zhongyang village was a small mountain village that was poor. It was precisely because Zheng Jianghao had seen the true pain there that he yearned for Yixian's help. Yixian shook his head gently and said, However, I'm not going over to help them sell fruits. Hearing Yixian's rejection, Zhang Jianghao's heart skipped a beat. He clearly knew that he was just hoping, but the moment he was rejected, he was still very disappointed. I have something important to do over there. I'm going to help them expropriate the land and relocate them. Yixian spoke slowly but clearly. Was he going to expropriate the land and relocate the villagers? Was there really such a good thing? If the land in Zhengyang village was expropriated, the people in the village could obtain a sum of money and settle down elsewhere. This way, their originally poor living environment could suddenly undergo a fundamental change. The light in Zhang Jianghao's eyes that had just extinguished instantly lit up again. He looked straight at Yi Xian. Young master, is what you said true? Yi Xian said, why would I lie to you? Don't worry. Yi Xian glanced at Zhang Jianghao, who was still immersed in excitement, and instructed, Bring more people tomorrow and go straight to Zhongyang village. I'll go with Lu Yinran to find Lu Zonglin and the others. We'll meet at Zhongyang village at the end. Zhang Jianghao immediately agreed and went out to prepare his people. After Yi Xian saw him leave, he took out his phone and called Lu Zonglin to inform him of his arrangements. Let's meet tomorrow and go to Zhongyang village together. I've also prepared some people over there. You should prepare yourself too. Lu Zonglin hurriedly agreed on the other end of the phone. Don't worry, I'll definitely do my best to complete the mission you gave me. After hanging up, Lu Zonglin immediately began to prepare. The next morning, while Yi Xin and the others were still dreaming, the entire Zhongyang village had already begun to wake up. As Zhongyang village was relatively remote and backward, the village still maintained the habit of working at sunrise and resting at sunset. The old people didn't sleep much to begin with, so they had long gotten up and cleaned up the house. Then, they picked up the tools that they had used for decades and prepared to go to the fields. All the food in Zhongyang village was grown by the diligent hands of the villagers. Therefore, even though there were only some old people and children left in the village, they still maintained the habit of working. Although the old people's movements were a little slower, being able to get off the ground meant that their bodies were still strong. They had to finish their daily work even if they had to endure it. If they did not work for a day, they might starve in the following days. Uncle Lee, you're here so early today too. Have you eaten breakfast? Not yet. I thought that it would be cooler in the morning, so I deliberately woke up early. You're doing well by waking up so early too. Damn, don't mention it. My prodigal mother woke me up early in the morning. It's difficult not to think of it. During the intervals between work and the field, everyone chatted and laughed with the neighbors around them. They were also leisurely. They were not young anymore, but they were very careful to avoid the issue of their children. As long as their children were mentioned, 
it would be the pain of all the elders in Zhangyang village. In order to survive, the children would all travel far away to work. They might not come back even after going out for a few years. Did they miss their children? The answer was obvious. However, there was nothing they could do. Even if they missed their children, this wouldn't produce money or fill their stomachs. After another two hours, white smoke floated out of every house in Zhongyang village. At this moment, the women at home began to cook. When the old people working hard in the field saw the smoke, they picked up their farming tools and walked towards home. After working for the entire morning, they were also very tired. They could go back for breakfast and rest their feet. Child, why did you run out again? Hurry up and go home. Also, you children, hurry up and go home to eat. All of you only know how to play. Haha, ha, children are naturally playful. The weather today is not bad. If they want to play, let them play for a while. On the way home, there were a few curses from time to time. They were calling their children home to eat. Their rough and hoarse voices were accompanied by a thick accent, giving off a different kind of warmth. Perhaps this was the truest state of life. Chatting, laboring, arguing, laughing, and scolding were all out of duty and love. During breakfast, the sun slowly rose. The children ate their breakfast quickly and anxiously. They all looked forward to going out to play with their friends. There were already many children gathered at the entrance of the village. They gathered together and played an unknown game. Wow, look, there are so many big cars over there. The children who were playing at the entrance of the village pointed into the distance and shouted. Everyone instantly looked into the distance. The children shouted and ran into the village. As they ran, they shouted, Everyone, come out and take a look. Many big cars are coming to us. When the villagers heard the sound, they walked to the street and looked into the distance. The few young people in the village also walked out of their houses. They looked at the convoy running towards them excitedly and said, Are the developers from the city here? As far as the eye could see, there was a Hummer driving on the yellow dirt road. The Hummer was full of horsepower, sweeping up the yellow soil along the way. Only a powerful off-road vehicle like the Hummer could deal with such a rugged mountain road. That scene was beautiful and domineering. As the Hummer convoy gradually approached, the villagers could finally see the car clearly. What they saw frightened them so much that they stood rooted to the ground. They had seen small cars before, but they had never seen such a big and strong off-road vehicle. In their eyes, the huge exhaust tube was like the huge nose of a water buffalo, spewing out exhaust gas. Those small cars were basically not even as tall as a person, but if a person stood beside a Hummer, shorter people would not even be as tall as the hood. An older man in the crowd clicked his tongue in fear and muttered to himself, How is this a car? I'll believe you if you tell me that this is a tank. The young people were here to visit their families. They had seen the world outside. Thursday, when they saw the Hummer convoy, they were so excited that they almost couldn't speak. Oh my God, this must be the legendary luxury car. Look at its power. It's easy to drive on any road. Who exactly is it that can form such a convoy to enter the village? Who said that? Perhaps our village is really lucky and our fates are going to change. A few young people were talking excitedly. An old man who was smoking a tobacco pipe walked up and asked curiously, Eh, what's so different about these small cars? Didn't Zhang Hao drive one back when he returned from the military? In the old man's opinion, no matter the size or appearance of the car, it was the same. If his grandson could drive a small car back when he was discharged from the army, it meant that he was a promising person. One of the young men laughed out loud. He looked at the old man who was still smoking and said, Grandpa Zhang, this is different. Brother Hao drove back a Wuling Hongguang, which is a car worth tens of thousands of yuan. This is a Hummer. It's the king of SUVs. It's a very high-end luxury car. A good car? I know it's a good car. The old man called Grandpa Zhang tapped his tobacco pipe and spoke with a smile. The young man was a little speechless about Grandpa Zhang's understanding. He thought for a moment and rephrased his words. This Hummer is very expensive. It's worth millions. What? A few million? Just for one car? Old Master Zhang was simply stunned. After living for so many years, the most money he had seen was only tens of thousands. That was the relocation fee that Zhang Jianghao had brought back when he retired from the army. 
Otherwise, honest farmers like them who faced the yellow soil with their backs to the sky would be very satisfied with a few thousand yuan in cash. When he understood the value of this car, the way he looked at the Hummer convoy changed. Each car cost millions. In that case, such a long convoy was worth a lot of money, right? The few elders had long stopped trying to determine the value of the cars. The wrinkles on their faces were filled with surprise. How much was their entire village worth? Why would such a rich person come to a remote village like theirs? Just as everyone was surprised, the Hummer in the lead had already driven into the village and was driving straight in the direction of their conversation. In an instant, the first Hummer arrived in front of them and stopped nimbly. A man jumped out of the driver's seat. Everyone looked over in unison. The person who jumped down was none other than Zheng Jianghao. Zheng Jianghao saw his grandfather from afar. He walked up to old master Zheng, who was holding a tobacco pipe, and said with a smile, Grandpa, I'm back. Old master Zheng simply could not believe his eyes. He rubbed his eyes repeatedly with his thick tree bark-like fingers before saying in surprise, Zheng Hao, it's you. The other villagers also surrounded him and spoke fervently to Zheng Zhang Hao. Zhang Hao is really back. That's good news. Zhang Hao has made a name for himself this time. Where did Zhang Hao come from? He made a lot of money. Hurry up and go back to the house to rest. Let's all walk to the back and make some space for the cars behind. Looks like they're all Zhang Hao's friends. We have to be more enthusiastic. The young man from before also jumped out and grinned at Zhang Zhang Hao. Brother Hao. Old Master Zhang suddenly grabbed Zhang Zhang Hao's hand and looked at him with a scrutinizing gaze. He asked, I heard from Xiaonan that this is a car worth millions. Why are you driving it? The old man also hoped that his grandson would live a good life, but if he made money and messed around like this, he would criticize this child. Zhang Jianghao looked helpless and explained to the villagers, These cars belong to my boss. I'm working under my boss now. My monthly salary is 50,000 yuan. He spoke happily and even waved his open right hand at his grandfather. Was his monthly salary 50,000 yuan? To the villagers, this number was simply an astronomical figure. Their children were also working outside. However, since they were not very cultured, they only lived a comfortable life. However, look at Zheng Jianghao. Not only had he returned from the army, but he also found a job that paid him 50,000 yuan a month. In the eyes of the villagers, it was already a blessing to be able to drive such a big car with this salary in hand. The villagers' discussion became even louder. Oh my god, 50,000 yuan a month. I haven't saved up 50,000 yuan in my life. That's right. Zhang Hao met a good person outside. This boss is really generous. Brother Hao, is your boss still short of people? I don't have high expectations. I feel that I have a bright future if I can follow such a boss. At the mention of Yi Xin, Zhang Jianghao's face also became proud. That was his young master. He was the best in the world. Eh? Zhang Hao, why did you bring so many people back? Someone in the crowd asked. Everyone looked over inquiringly. If he had come home to visit his family, he wouldn't have brought so many people right? Zheng Jianghao scratched his head and said in embarrassment, look at my memory. I was so focused on greeting you that I forgot to tell everyone this good news. Our boss is here to relocate everyone. At that time, everyone's lives will be better. As soon as this news was announced, all the villagers became excited. Some of the older people even shed tears of excitement. If they could go out, wouldn't they be able to reunite with their children? This was a good thing. How can there be such a good thing? Zhang Hao is our village's lucky star. He brought such good news as soon as he arrived. I've seen that Zhang Hao was not ordinary since he was young. Look, my prophecy is divine. Forget it. When did you make a prophecy? However, Zhang Hao can still remember us when he's rich. This means that he didn't forget his roots. Looking at the excited villagers, Zhang Jiang Hao said, I have to call my boss. The road in our village is even harder to walk than before. I'll tell him to be careful when he comes over. Otherwise, this road will be very bumpy. The villagers smiled as they watched Zheng Jianghao make a call. Suddenly, they heard a rumbling sound in the distant sky. A sharp-eyed child saw this and shouted with widened eyes, Everyone, come and take a look. There's a big plane over there. A plane? 
The villagers looked in the direction the child was pointing and saw two helicopters flying over not far away. The rumbling sound was the sound of the propellers. The villagers were shocked. There seemed to be too many surprises today. First, Zhang Jianghao brought a convoy into the village. Why were there two helicopters flying in the sky now? What exactly was going on? The small mountain village that was ignored for so many years suddenly became lively today. Old Master Zhang watched as Zhang Jianghao put down his cell phone and asked in confusion, What's wrong, child? Did the helicopter delay the signal on your cell phone? Why didn't you call your boss? Zhang Jianghao grinned and pointed at the helicopters circling in the sky. This helicopter also belongs to my boss. He's already here, so why am I still calling him? The villagers looked at the helicopter in the sky that was about to land, as if they were looking at Bodhisattva. So there was really a big shot sitting here. Such a magnanimous boss was here to relocate them. Where could they find such a good person? Everyone, gather in Grandpa Zhang's courtyard and make room for the helicopter to land. That's right, that's right. Let's quickly hide. We can't delay the boss from landing. This is really a good thing. I have to call the children and make them happy. The other cars in the convoy found a place to park. The helicopter also found a good spot and slowly landed. Lu Yinran jumped down first, followed by Yi Xian. Zhang Jianghao was already waiting nearby. When he saw them get off the helicopter, he quickly ran over. Boss, you've worked hard. I've already told everyone that you're going to relocate them. Everyone is very happy. With that, old master Zhang, who was behind Zhang Jianghao, walked over. Seeing this, Zhang Jianghao quickly introduced his grandfather to Yi Xian. Grandpa, this is the boss I mentioned. This is his secretary, Miss Liu. Zhang Jianghao introduced Yi Xian to his grandfather. Grandpa Zheng's eyes widened. He thought, oh my god, a child of this age is already a boss? It was no wonder young children racked their brains to go outside. The outside world was really different. The children in the village who looked older than Yi Xian were fooling around every day. They were not upright. However, look at this child. He could already purchase their village. Hello, boss. Grandpa Zheng was a little nervous. He smiled foolishly and did not know what to say. Everyone, stop standing here. Come to my courtyard and sit down to rest. Since Grandpa Zhang had personally invited him, Yi Xian naturally had to respect him. So he brought the people from the Jinling branch of the Dinglong Corporation over. The news of the relocation spread throughout Jingyang village. Someone specially went to the village chief's house and brought this good news to him. What? You're saying that the big boss is already here and is a guest at old man Zheng's house? The village chief was shocked and asked in disbelief. After receiving an affirmative answer, the village chief immediately took out a cell phone and started to call the town. When the mayor received the call, he was also dumbfounded. He repeatedly called out to the village chief. All right, all right, this is a great thing. You have to receive him well immediately, understand? We'll go over now. You have to keep the esteemed guests. How could the village chief dare to disobey the mayor's personal instructions? After putting down the phone, he shuffled towards old man Zheng's house. The mayor also began to bring people to Zhengyang village. The village chief ran anxiously on the road. When he saw the Hummers parked on both sides of the road, his eyes were about to pop out. Then, he saw two helicopters parked not far from old man Zheng's house. His heart soared. This was really a top-notch figure. After all, he was the village chief. His horizons were definitely higher than ordinary villagers, but he was also stunned. So this was what the rich people outside were like. It was really terrifying. When he arrived at old man Zheng's house, the village chief straightened his clothes and shouted into the courtyard, Uncle Zhang, I heard that Zhang Hao and his boss are here. I specially came to welcome them. They had lived together for decades. Grandpa Zheng immediately recognized the village chief's voice and welcomed him with a smile. Is the village chief here? Quickly invite him in. Many people in our village are here. Grandpa Zheng's house was an ancient brick house. It looked a little dilapidated, but it was clean. Yi Xian and the higher-ups of the Jinling branch company sat in the courtyard. They drank tea as they chatted. The village chief hurriedly ran over and introduced himself to Yi Xian. Looking at Yi Xian, the village chief's heart was about to explode. An eight- or nine-year-old child was the boss of a large company. 
There was also such a beautiful female secretary following beside him. Her appearance and temperament were like the seven fairies in storybooks. She was extremely fairy-like. What a difference. He would never have dreamed of such a strange scene, but it just had to appear in front of him. The more the village chief thought about it, the more shocked he became, and his attitude towards Yi Xin became even more respectful. After entering the courtyard for a long time, Grandpa Zhang called out to him several times, but he didn't dare to sit down. Instead, he stood respectfully at the side and carefully spoke to Yi Xin. Not long after, the mayor rushed over in the town's car. The road was rugged and bumpy, so much so that he almost fainted. This road is too lousy. We invest money every year, but it gets worse and worse. It's really a lousy project. The mayor muttered softly. He knew that the funding was decreasing, but there was nothing he could do. There was only so much money. He had to invest it in a more rewarding place. The old leader had said it well. He wanted a portion of people to get rich first. Now, a big boss was willing to invest in the demolition and relocation of this village. He had helped their town a lot. It was also because of this that the mayor rushed over. He also hoped that the villagers would live a better life as long as he was able to contribute. Soon, the entrance to Zhengyang village was in front of him. However, their car was stopped. A few burly men in black sized up the public cars from the town with scrutinizing gazes. They were brought by Zheng Jianghao and were in charge of Yi Xian's safety. They had specially arranged for people to stay here because they were afraid that some unrelated people would squeeze into the village. The driver in the car was a little dissatisfied with the gazes. After working in town for so many years, when had he ever received such treatment? He rolled down the window and asked in a stiff tone, What are you doing? What right do you have to block the road here? The cadre in the front passenger seat also replied angrily, This is our mayor. Aren't you going to move aside? These people were really baffling. They even dared to stop the mayor's car. Did they want to live a good life? When the men heard this, their expressions darkened. Was the mayor so impressive? The safety of their boss was the most important. Since they were so arrogant, they shouldn't go in. The men were about to chase them away when they saw the back door of the car open. Then, the mayor personally got out. He frowned and reprimanded the cadre who had spoken just now. How can you say that? Remember this. We are the public servants of the people, not their grandfathers. When you get back, immediately reflect on yourself. What kind of attitude is this? After the mayor finished teaching the cadre a lesson, he introduced himself very politely to the men. Hello, I'm the mayor here. I came today mainly to visit your boss and discuss the specifics of demolishing and relocating Xingyang village with him. When the men heard the mayor's words, they immediately said, How about this? Wait here for a moment. I'll talk to our boss. Soon, the men returned and said politely to the mayor, Our boss said to invite you in. After obtaining Yi Xian's permission, the mayor brought his subordinates into Zhengyang village. He was also shocked by the luxurious convoy and the helicopter at the entrance. However, he was the head of the town after all. He still had some tolerance. Although they didn't have such a rich man here, they had heard of him. After stepping into Grandpa Zheng's courtyard, everyone saw Yi Xian surrounded in the middle. Looking at his young age, the mayor was stunned on the spot. Did such a little child say that he was here to engage in demolition? Could it be that the village chief's information was wrong and he had made a big mistake? It wasn't that the mayor was suspicious, but Yi Xian's age was too confusing. He looked like he was eight or nine years old. Could he do such a big thing? Even the top families in big cities probably did not have such courage. Lu Yinran looked at the mayor's conflicted expression and guessed what he was thinking. She smiled disdainfully. A mayor actually judged people by their appearance. He was even worse than the village chief. Uh, hello. I'm the mayor here. The mayor was stunned for a while before coming forward to greet them awkwardly. The mayor wasn't judging a book by its cover. He just couldn't believe it. Yi Xian was too young. The impact took him a long time to recover. Lu Yinran stood up elegantly and said with a smile, Hello, I'm Chairman Ye's secretary. Chairman Yi is the chairman of the Dinglong Corporation. These people here today are all the higher-ups of the Jinling branch. The mayor almost bit his tongue when he heard the name Dinglong Corporation. The Dinglong Corporation was one of the top companies in China. 
The chairman of such a large corporation was actually a young boy. It was unbelievable. The mayor was shocked and his attitude towards Yixin immediately became respectful. With such an identity, if he said that he wanted to help to demolish and relocate Zhengyang village, this matter would be considered settled. The mayor suppressed the excitement in his heart and asked Yixin, Chairman Yi, why did you come to Zhengyang village this time? Yixian did not hide anything and said bluntly, I'm here to demolish and relocate Zhengyang village. When the mayor heard this, he was immediately overjoyed. As expected, the information was accurate. It would be great if Zhengyang village could be demolished and relocated. After all, Zhengyang village was the poorest village in the town. Moreover, the geographical conditions were not good. The road outside was still as poor as ever after so many years of construction. As a result, no developer had come to seize the land for so many years, and no one had come to collect the good agricultural products. What was the use of having good stuff? They could not be transported out at all. The mayor also helped to think of many ways. However, when the wholesalers saw the road outside the village, they did not even enter the village gate and turned around to leave. The people were getting poorer and poorer. He and the leaders of the village had tried many ways to save them, but it was to no avail. This was great. With this demolition and relocation, the villagers of Zhengyang village could escape such difficulties. The mayor licked his dry lips and lowered his head slightly. He didn't want the anticipation in his eyes to scare Yixian. What do you plan to do? Yixian thought for a moment and replied directly, Let's do it according to the usual process of land expropriation and demolition. I'll arrange for people to come to Zhengyang village and measure the houses for the villagers. When the time comes, the compensation standard will be calculated according to the area of the houses. What the mayor wanted to know the most was the specific demolition standards. If the standards were too low, these villagers might have to pay a portion of the money themselves. This money was too difficult for the poor villagers of Zhengyang village to fork out. The mayor came this time to negotiate with Yixian and try to get good benefits for the villagers of Zhengyang village. However, he also knew that this was very difficult. In such a poor geographical location, it was already a good thing that someone was willing to seize the land. How could he negotiate with Yixian? It was really too difficult. However, in order for the villagers of Zhengyang village to live and work in peace, the mayor had already made up his mind. He could not lose face anymore. He had to go all out. What about a more specific plan? Do you have any ideas for the time being? The mayor asked directly. Yevuan noted. I'm preparing to compensate for the houses. As for the location of the houses, I've already planned it. There are a few new houses in town prepared by Tianxin Real Estate. If the villagers don't want the houses, it's fine. We can compensate you according to the price of the new houses. The mayor was stunned when he heard this. The land in the village would be expropriated, and the villages would be compensated with properties in the city. Furthermore, the villagers would be compensated based on the size of their current houses. If the villagers didn't want the houses, they could exchange it for a portion of the money. This was an extremely good thing. Was Chairman Yi here to be kind? The mayor looked at Yixian, who was eight or nine years old, and then looked at Yixian's unbelievably beautiful face. He began to seriously suspect that this was a child of good fortune sent by the heavens, right? This was not a businessman at all. Meanwhile, the other cadres gaped in shock and looked at Yixian in disbelief. They were filled with hatred. Why weren't they from Zhengyang village? One had to know that the high-priced properties in the city were not just a little expensive. If they could exchange for so many properties in the city after decades of hard work, they would accept it. They didn't even dare to think about whether they were living well or living in the city. The mayor was very excited. He took a few steps forward and grabbed Yixian's hand, shaking it. Chairman Yi, you're really a good person. What you did really saved the people of Zhengyang village. On behalf of the town government and all the people of Zhengyang village, I have to thank you. The other cadres also praised Yixian's actions. Chairman Yi, you're really too generous. This is equivalent to helping the poor. This is not a kind act in disguise. This is simply allowing the commoners of Zhengyang village to become rich. The children of Zhengyang village can go out and receive better education. Their future has also changed drastically. Thank you, Chairman Yi. 
The mayor was overjoyed and immediately expressed that he wanted to sign an agreement with Yi Xian on the spot. It was not that the mayor was impatient, but he was afraid that Yi Xian would think it through and go back on his words. He had to strike while the iron was hot. Unexpectedly, Yi Xian agreed without thinking. He even praised the mayor's way of doing things. If all the leaders can be like the mayor, our country's economic speed will definitely rise to another level. The mayor smiled in embarrassment. He did not dare to tell the truth. His decisiveness was based on the majority of the benefits that Yi Xian sacrificed. If it had been a stingy developer, the mayor would have stomped his feet and scolded him for the sake of the villagers. The cadres immediately went to prepare and finally drafted an agreement. After both parties carefully read the details of the contract, they signed the agreement on the spot. There were two copies of the contract, and the representative of each party would take a copy. After signing the contract, the mayor looked at the contract again and again. He was so happy that his eyes almost could not be seen. Chairman Yi, you're really noble. This is the best thing for our town and for Zhongyang village. After saying that, the mayor subconsciously covered his mouth. Look at him. How could he call Yi Xian noble? This made it seem like he was deceiving a child to do good for Zhongyang village. He felt so guilty. However, it was quickly washed away by joy and excitement. The other cadres echoed the mayor's words. They praised and thanked Yi Xian for his actions. Yi Xian looked at them and then at his feet. They didn't know that there was a gold mine below. However, if Yi Xian didn't come, the villagers here probably wouldn't know that there was a gold mine down there and they would be poor. If they were to really talk about it, who knew who would be the winner? When they were signing the contract, there were villagers watching. They watched the entire contract signing process with their own eyes. After everything was settled, they ran out happily and informed all the other villagers. Every villager who knew that they were going to be relocated was overjoyed. They chattered like little sparrows returning from hunting in spring with a hint of excitement. This is really a good thing. I didn't expect such a good thing to happen to Zhongyang village one day. Bodhisattva, please bless us. If you ask me, why are you still worshipping Bodhisattva? The living Bodhisattva in our village is at Uncle Zheng's house. If you're really sincere, kowtow to him on the spot. Why not? If you go, I'll go with you. He solved such a big problem for our village. What's wrong with paying respects? That's great. I've already told my child about this. He said that he'll come back now. I can finally see him. The villagers were actually very grateful to Yi Xian. However, most of them were farmers who had never seen the world. How could they have the nerve to meet the big boss? In the end, everyone went to Grandpa Zheng's house to thank Yi Xian in person. Of course, when they first saw Yi Xian, they were also shocked. Soon, they were relieved. For such a young child to be so kind, the heavens had to bless him and allow him to make a fortune. It did not take long for the villagers who were working outside to hear the good news. They began to rush home. Such a good thing had to be confirmed in person before they dared to believe it. The villagers were all overjoyed. The entire village was filled with joy. The entire village collectively slaughtered pigs and sheep, not only to welcome the children they had not seen for a few years, but also to celebrate this once-in-a-century joyous occasion. Yi Xian was also very happy when he saw how excited the villagers were. He called everyone over and held a small meeting at the scene. Zhang Zhanghao, you're familiar with the environment here. Next, I'll leave the measuring of the area of the houses and the signing of the land contracts to you. Work with the general manager of the Jinling branch, Lu Zhonglin, to execute it. Do you understand what to do? As a child of Zhengyang village, Zhang Zhanghao stood at attention and saluted. Thank you for your trust, young master. I promise to complete the mission. Lu Zhonglin's ability was obvious to all. With his cooperation, Yi Xian was very assured. That afternoon, under the lead of the village chief, Zhang Jianghao went to some families who could make decisions without waiting for the young people to return and carefully measured the area of the houses for them. With Zhang Jianghao, a villager, here, everyone was at ease. They had all watched Zhang Jianghao grow up. This child's character was quite good, so they trusted him to do it. Jianghao, just measure it. I fully trust you. The size of the house will be whatever you say it is. It's all thanks to you that we can encounter such a good thing. Can we still fuss over such a small matter? 
I really didn't expect this. Even though I have a dilapidated mud house, I can even get a property in the city based on its area. I can't believe it. The villagers were very cooperative and signed many demolition agreements in the afternoon. Later on, the young people who went out to work also returned to the village one after another. After confirming that it was true, they all ran to the village chief's house and requested to start measuring the area of their houses the next day. If they really moved to the city, they could find a job in the city and live with their families. The village chief was also very responsible. He recorded all the information about these families and handed it to Zheng Jianghao and Lu Zonglin the next day. With the name list, their speed of doing things increased even more. For the next few days, Zheng Jianghao and Lu Zonglin, the general manager of the Jinling branch, watched over the place. A few days later, Yi Xian calculated that it was about time and took the helicopter to Zhengyang village again. After he arrived, he called Zheng Jianghao and Lu Zhonglin to ask about the progress of the demolition and relocation. When Zheng Jianghao saw Yi Xin, he said with a guilty expression, I'm sorry, young master. The demolition and relocation should have ended, but there's a small problem now. We haven't found a solution yet. Yi Xin patted Zheng Jianghao's shoulder to comfort him. He trusted Zheng Jianghao's loyalty and asked him to briefly explain the matter. Tell me, I can help you think of a way. Zhang Jianghao's face was filled with indignation. He said with a gloomy expression, I'm angry when I talk about this matter. We actually encountered a gang, and it was an alliance formed by several families. En alliance? Yi Xian raised his eyebrows. These people were quite interesting. Did they learn from Hollywood blockbusters outside? It's fine. Let's go over and take a look at the situation before making a decision. Yi Xian stood up and was about to go over. The village chief and mayor followed behind nervously. They also felt very helpless. This was supposed to be a good thing, but someone actually caused trouble here. Sigh. If such a good thing was ruined, let's see how these people would stay in this village in the future. They had been following Yi Xin's men up and down for the past two days. In the end, those people were like rocks in a latrine pit, hard and stiff. At this moment, on the east side of the village, a few farmers were holding their farming tools in a defensive posture. They faced many of Yi Xian's men and were ready to fight to the death if his men dared to touch their houses. Many villagers had already surrounded them and were persuading them kindly. Ayo, what are you guys doing? It's clearly a good thing. Why are you guys making a fuss? You're really lacking in virtue. Can't you all stop talking and sit down to talk? You even brought out the murder weapons. Are you going to stop after killing someone? Forget it. It's useless no matter what we say. The village chief and the mayor went to talk to them one by one. Which of them relented? It's just that they were blinded and went crazy. They've all seen the world outside, but I don't think they're as sensible as the old men and women in our village. At this moment, Yi Xin and the rest also arrived at the event location. When Yi Xin's men saw him coming over, they all retracted their postures and greeted Yi Xian. Yi Xian waved his hand at them, indicating that they did not need to be so polite. Then, he asked, What's wrong? What are you doing? The person in charge of the area walked out and said respectfully to Yi Xian, It's like this, chairman. We talked to them according to your request and explained the details of the compensation to them clearly. Their families happily agreed previously, but they suddenly changed their minds today. They said that this is their ancestral home and they won't allow it to be demolished. From the looks of it, they're probably going to stay here and raise the price. Oh, replied Ye Wan. He thought it was something amazing. It was fine if they didn't sign the agreement, but why did they have to be so hostile? There was no need. They would sit down and have a good talk. If it didn't work out, then forget it. Anyway, this was not the location of the gold mine, so it did not matter. Meanwhile, the person in charge felt very bitter. The villagers in the other districts were very cooperative and signed the agreement early. There were only old people and the few families here. Although the old people were happy, they felt that it was necessary to discuss it with their children, so they delayed it until yesterday. Yesterday, when the children from the families arrived home, the person in charge personally came to tell them the relevant policies and compensation details. They even agreed at that time. Unexpectedly, when he brought the contracts and staff to the door today, these people directly made a fuss. They took out their hoes and shovels, looking like they were going to fight them to the death. 
The person in charge didn't want to be in a state of mutual hostility, but if he didn't show an imposing manner, their staff might get injured too. He could not bear this responsibility. The more the person in charge thought about it, the angrier he became. This was really a poor village that produced unruly people. This was simply a good thing to have such good things fall into their laps. These bastards were about to starve to death. Yet, they even felt that the pie was not filling enough. They deserved to die of poverty. The village chief stood timidly behind the mayor, not even wanting to show his face. These villagers did not care about him at all. When he went to mediate the conflict, those people looked at him from the corner of their eyes. They looked down on the village chief as if the village chief had done something treasonous. Not only was the village chief not respected, even the mayor was not treated with respect at all. When the mayor went to their house as a guest, they already knew what the mayor meant by coming. The women in the house deliberately swept the floor beside the mayor, causing dust to fly. The mayor almost choked to death. Before closing the door, they even told the mayor that before the demolition matter was settled, their families had to clean up and it was not convenient for them to meet guests. In other words, even if he came, he would still be served with a big broom. Yixian called the village chief to his side and asked softly, What's the relationship between these families? They seem to live quite close. The courtyards of a few families were connected and were located in the eastern corner of the village. The village chief immediately replied, They're all cousins and can be considered a big family. They're closely related and are very close to one another. Yevuan noted. It was no wonder they could work together. They were relatives. Those families all recognized Yixian. They had heard from their families that the big boss who wanted to acquire their village was an eight- or nine-year-old child. Now that they saw Yixian whispering to the village chief, how could they not be sure of Yixian's identity? The few middle-aged men quickly exchanged glances. Yixian happened to be observing them and caught the smugness in their eyes. They did not want to negotiate with these useless troops. It was useless. They could not make the decision at all. Even the village chief and mayor were the same. They were just cooperating with the big boss's work. They weren't the ones paying for it. It was just wishful thinking to talk about it. Now that the big boss was out, it meant that the big boss valued their village. Ahim, you're the boss who wants to expropriate our houses, right? Let me tell you, this is our family's ancestral home. It's our lifeblood. We definitely won't demolish it. A middle-aged man stood up and shook the hammer in his hand as he spoke.